Okay, but, uh, I think it's really uh, it's really worth it to have um, you know like great energy level because we have very very interesting uh, topic uh, brought for you today, and uh, I think we are very happy to be on stage. Um, so today we're going to talk about how are new technologies impacting banking fraud. Yeah, we also have brought a nice demo about uh, deep fake. And we will also touch, uh, of course, like the famous topic, uh, machine learning. So my name is Benjamin Mark. Uh, I work for ING Belgium. And I have brought with me also my uh, dear colleagues, which is uh, George Boroku and Mihai Roman. Let's click. So this is an uh, overview of us. Um, in case you don't know ING, we have uh, brought a very um, short uh, video. This is uh, actually ING Bank. We have uh, 57,000 employees worldwide in 40 countries, especially retail uh, banking, but also in the wholesale banking we are active. You see a lot of energy involved of the people. We have 39 million clients. And we have one goal actually, to build uh, the digital bank of tomorrow. That's our main ambition. And that's what we are really thrilled about uh, uh, every day. All right, so with said that, handing over to Mihai. Thank you. We're talking about fraud. I'm not gonna go with a full blown definition of what is fraud. In one sentence I can say, yeah, fraud is a crime. That's legislation, that's how the fraudster are paying for what they are doing. But we all three work for a bank, but in the same time, we all three are customers of a bank. So I would like to take another approach on the fraud. It's an unfortunate event that can happen to any one of us. And it has two, two sides. One, one of them being, of course, financial impact, financial losses. But the other one, which I do consider that it's more important, it's the emotional impact. Having said that, and I would like that you keep these two things in mind while we go a bit over a couple of fraud schemes, I would say, that happened in the last five to, ten, five to 10 years. I saw earlier today people using Windows, but also people using Mac OS. I think most of you should be aware about the Microsoft uh, phone scheme. So you had somebody calling you, pretending to be Microsoft. What they wanted in the end? They wanted to gain control to your system. What they can, can do after? Basically everything that they wanted. They were aiming for, first for getting data. And then you would have to pay to gain back control of your data. Uh, another scenario here, we can look at the um, so-called accident method. Uh, assuming that I have a kid that lives abroad, I get a phone call saying, yeah, your kid was in an accident, so in order to not be prosecuted, you have to pay back a certain amount of money. So, financial impact is always there, emotional, it's there as well. We are doing mistakes when we are under pressure or we have emotions especially if we're talking about, about relatives. Now I think this one, it's, uh, it's quite a classic one. We all had it in Europe, we had it in, in US. We're going to the little machines, the little ATMs to get some cash. So you had the bad guys, which are able to copy your, um, your card. Uh, years back before the 3DS, 3DS scheme or uh, any kind of multi-factor authentication, it was very easy for the froster to buy something online and usually something expensive. You had no clue as a victim of a fraud that this happened until you went the next time to, to get some cash or you get a phone call from your bank saying your balance is zero or negative. We're talking about froster and victims. Uh, if I get your ca card cloned, is that enough these days to use it? I would say no. 
then I can start to look into the social engineering or even impersonating somebody else to try to get more information from you. So for example, if you buy now something on Amazon, you have to provide a second code, which is supposed to be known only by you. Either you get it by SMS, either by mail. So again, I'm coming back to the phone call, you get the phone, somebody pretending to be from your bank or from um, a certain company, and they, they are giving you enough information in order to, to believe them. So then it's very easy for you as a victim to say, okay, seems legit. Okay, I will share my details with them. And then, of course, it becomes a disaster because we lose money, the emotional aspects are still, are still there. These were the schemes of the past. I call them. Uh, I can pretend to be somebody else, I can give you a phone call, I can clone your card. Fraudsters are also human, so they do mistakes. As I said in, with the phone call example, yeah, if you call me and tell me that you are from Microsoft, I'm gonna say, sorry, I have no Microsoft device in my house. So they are doing mistakes, but they are smart, so we get in a mouse and cat game. Putting all this together, I will let now judge to look a bit at the future and to look what we have to be prepared for. Perfect, thank you, Mihai. Uh, since we don't have a lot of time, uh, we're going to focus mostly on, uh, on one of these new technologies, which is the deep fake. Um, and we're going to start by understanding a bit what uh, deep fake is. Um, so as you can see on the screen, uh, deep fakes are uh, computer generated audio and video uh, representations of another person uh, or of a generated person because in some cases the fraudsters want to uh, not use an, a special identity but just a random one that doesn't exist and in the past uh, yeah I would say two years we saw an increase uh, in uh, two scams the first one that maybe some of you might have seen uh, on Facebook and other uh, social media platforms is when uh, the fraudsters are using a promoted video of let's say Elon Musk or a very famous person that is promoting a cryptocurrency that uh, in the back is a scam, or even if it's not a scam, it's a rock pool, so they just want to take the money and then get out. Uh, so they're using deepfake to generate this, this type of videos where you see that uh, yeah, the famous person is saying, yeah, this, is, this new currency is the future, I totally believe in it, and so on. Um, and a second scam that is uh, used in more complex uh, type of frauds, uh, it's uh, when, when they are trying to target uh, different engineers or employees of the companies that they want to, uh, to attack. Uh, and they're doing that by uh, making sure that the, the persons that they are targeting are seeing some ads for very good jobs at uh, maybe competitor, competitor companies or even companies that they fakely create. And they usually go through all this process where uh, you're, you're going to have interviews and there is a famous case where they had, I think, around seven interviews with the person, technical interviews, HR, and so on. And at the end, they sent, uh, they were using deepfake for that to impersonate uh, yeah, the people from that company. And at the end, they sent a PDF injected with a malware, which the engineer opened on his corporate laptop. And then they got access, admin, admin access to a big part of the company, and they did a lot of damage. So this is, these are two of the use cases in which we uh, we saw uh, yeah, a big increase in the past year. But now let's, let me explain you a simple scenario uh, where I can show you what the fraudsters can do today. So we're going to take a company, let's say a Corporation X, that has a branch in, let's say, Spain. The attackers are gathering data and they're especially targeting this uh, branch because they have a lot of money in their account. Um, they did some research, social media, social engineering, calling, emails, and so on. They gathered the information. They saw when some people are away for holidays and they are targeting uh, one of the senior accountants, Julia, that can, has the access to make bank transfer large amounts. Uh, and their goal is to make her transfer $2 million in their account. And um, they are also basing this on the fact that she personally knows the CEO because they saw a picture of her and the CEO on the, on the social media. And what they're going to do, they're going to initialize, initialize a FaceTime call with her uh, by impersonating in real time the CEO. 
And you're going to see here uh, what we did. So uh, Mihai here is a fraudster and I'm playing the role of the CEO. Uh, this is generated only by using one image of me. Of course, it can be more advanced, uh, but then, uh, yeah, they need to use more resources and so on. But this is a very simple example using just one picture. And I can do this in real time, so I can FaceTime a person uh, by using my video, using the picture of, of the CEO, and telling whatever I, uh, I want to the person. And let's say uh, the fraudster is calling, it's calling Julia, he's saying that, yeah, you know, Julia, this is an emergency. We are uh, uh, doing, uh, we are undergoing a very serious audit, uh, and we are two million short in the HQ bank account. You need to transfer two million right now in this bank account. If you would be Julia, what would you do? Would you actually make the bank, bank transfer or not? Um, this is a very tricky question because, yeah, uh, they are usually, when they're doing this type of calls, before they were doing it mostly, as Mihai mentioned, during the, using a phone. Uh, but now, when you're also being able to see the person and you know the person, then are you going to do what the person is saying or not? Um, and, yeah, in many cases, they are, uh, usually succeeding, but of course there are also further defenses on the banking side. Some transactions are getting blocked if they're suspicious and so on. Uh, but now let's see a bit how we can actually uh, protect from this. Um, two of these points here on, on the screen are quite, let's say, generic and should apply if you receive any uh, uh, dodgy phone call or email and so on. Always double check before taking any major actions. This can be anything related to personal information, anything to money, to money related like transfers, or asking for uh, maybe even information from the office and so on, who's your boss, stuff like that. So, because the fraudster usually don't ask for everything in one piece. They will ask for pieces and then putting everything together and making their final attack. And if you're receiving a call like that from someone that you know, and uh, yeah, you might be kind of, um, yeah, you might really want to do that to help the person and so on. Always just try to call back or for example, if you have the phone number or in this case, if you are Julia, you can call the CEO office for example and make sure that you're actually talking with the CEO. And for uh, simple scams, like a call like that that is generated with, for, with only one image, uh, you can just ask the person to rotate the head because since, the, since that video call is generated only using one image, of course they don't have a 3D view so uh, yeah, the result will be a bit, uh, a bit like this. So, but of course the scam can become more complex and if they have lots of information, 3D, uh, 3D videos and so on, they can, uh, they can make it more complex. But since this would be a real time call, it's very hard to calculate it at this point uh, and to make it 100% uh, perfect. So if it's glitching in any way, it's a, it's a scam. And now we're going to talk about two uh, other technologies that we're going to see uh, in the future. Uh, the first one is the quantum computing. And uh, yeah, for, uh, for this one, it's most likely going to change and generate probably a new industrial revolution because it's going to help uh, many areas like the, yeah, the health industry generating uh, new type of medication, calculating molecules and so on, which are very complex operations that now we need a lot of computing power and some of them are actually impossible to calculate. Uh, but on the other side, on the dark side, let's say, uh, it's also going to uh, make scams like the, the one that you saw earlier uh, become more and more realistic. And it can also break all the, uh, let's say, uh, encryption algorithms that we are using today and uh, yeah, things like your password and so on. So, this is kind of a race between the giants uh, we have here like Microsoft and Google and so on that are trying to make the first fully working quantum computing or fully working hybrid computer. And yeah, this is something that we should uh, yeah, keep an eye out for uh, in the upcoming years. Another topic that uh, we wanted to briefly discuss with you, uh, it's the metaverse. Probably you've heard about this, it's kind of uh, yeah, the buzzword uh, right now. And I always try to make this analogy with uh, back in the days with the tablets. Because you know, when Microsoft first launched in 2003 the tablet, it was a nice gadget, but actually didn't have applications for it. Wi-Fi networks were not so uh, yeah, extended like the ones we have today. We have Wi-Fi networks everywhere. So it was basically a cool device, but you couldn't do anything with it. Um, and I think this is a bit what's happening right now with uh, Facebook slash Meta. 
that is pushing a lot into the metaverse direction, but there is not so much applicability in uh, today's life, and there are not so many applications developed on the metaverse yet. Um, and yeah, coming back to the tablet in 2010 when Apple came, came with the iPad, they tried to create an ecosystem first with the applications and making sure that people are aware what they can actually do with, uh, with the iPad. And of course, the connectivity was also uh, much more developed than back in 2003, so it was a big success. And uh, yeah, Microsoft uh, kind of failed. Um, so I think that's kind of what's going to happen with the metaverse in the future. And from our perspective, we also see it as uh, toward, going towards this direction of uh, full digital identity, uh, which of course is going to be quite cool because yeah, you're going to have everything uh, online. So you're, you're already able to do lots of, for example, uh, bank uh, transactions and uh, other operations directly from your mobile, but it will go even further like you will uh, be able to do most of your things by using the digital identity. But of course, this also opens a big door to fraud uh, during this, uh, this transition period. Uh, and now I will let uh, Benjamin yes. continue mm -hmm. and tell you a bit more about yeah. this. Uh, yeah, thank you, George. Thanks a lot. Uh, let me now talk a bit about uh, what you can actually do to prevent and to detect fraud. And there's a very bold statement here. Your bank will never call you to ask for your login credentials. This might be very obvious to you, right? Raise your hand that if, you, if you would uh, agree to this. Yeah, okay. But I can tell you, for many, many you know, customers out there, it's not obvious. And it's not clear to them. I have also brought a personal story. You know, my, my dad, he was uh, called uh, a couple of uh, months ago, and he's uh, over 70. He's actually almost uh, 80 years old. He was called uh, by an energy company. And uh, they told him on the phone that um, they have a very cheap energy contract, very cheap energy contract. And if he would go to the computer and would actually sign this energy contract, um, then, you know, it would be a super, super nice deal for him. But in the end, you know, we found out and he actually did it, right? He went to the computer on the phone, he signed a contract there and we found out that this contract was four times as high as the current contract. Yeah. So, and uh, this shows you, you know, and uh, this shows you and shows us, you know, that everybody actually can become a victim. That's, you know, why fraud awareness is so important. And we also have in, in ING a, a big department, which is, uh, which is taking care of this. So what we do there actually is we go out to all of the different uh, channels. We go out to uh, social media, we go out to the press, we go in, in ING uh, channels itself. And, you know, we spread the message that, uh, you know, which fraud happens to people, which fraud happens to customer, and um, that, you know, they have to apply careful behavior. So this is very, very important when we talk about uh, fraud, fraud awareness. Let's now jump to uh, the next part, which is uh, machine learning and uh, AI. So what we can actually do there is we can apply the same technology, what we have seen in the deepfake, to prevent and to detect fraud. And um, especially when we talk about transactions, yeah? Why uh, transactions? Because in transactions, this is where actually the shit happens, right? Because if the money has been flowing out of the bank, the fraudster was successful. And this is, of course, what we need to prevent. So what we uh, can actually do in a bank is we can um, apply, and I have brought on the bottom, some process, how it works. So we can apply all the business knowledge that we have to understand you know, what our transactions uh, all about. Also the historical data that, uh, of, of, um, of transactions we have seen in the past, which have been potentially fraudulent, right? And then you know, we use data science expertise to uh, build a model and to train a model with uh, that data. Yeah? And then what we do, we bring this in production and we monitor it. And why we actually monitoring it is because we need to continuously adopt to changes because we might see different pattern in the transaction data and we need to apply this in a, in a let's say, adjusted model that we have uh, in place. And what we also see is that we see a change of the rule writers, the classical ones, you know, the, the human beings writing rules like from, from the human brain, you know, if then, 
Basically, this is also changing to more like a data scientist role, yeah? because we want uh, in a bank to apply data science to our transaction data, because this is much more accurate and much more precise. Another important part is also what we can apply in, uh, in the banking area is behavioral biometrics. That can also increase actually fraud detection. And what we are doing there, we measure, we measure the, the customer behavior in the channels. So we measure where a customer clicks, we measure you know, in which flow the customer moves, and then we can also understand if this is actually a human being or if it's a robot, right? And um, yeah, basically how it works is we, um, we measure the, the actual customer behavior and we compare it with, uh, with some kind of a standard behavior we see in the channels. And of course, in that regard also data is key, right? The more data we have from customers, the better it is uh, to protect and to prevent fraud in the end. And what we can also do within the uh, banking area, we can combine this behavioral biometrics with what we have uh, just seen on the slide before with uh, machine learning, right? And this gives us a more complete uh, picture of, um, of the, let's say, the customer and if this is a potential fraudster or not. To sum it all up, um, we have talked about uh, deep fake, where we have seen uh, um, new technologies like AI and machine learning applied from fraudsters. We have also seen on the other side, from our side, from the prevention and detection fraud side, that we can also apply machine learning to, uh, to actually um, accurately pr um, predict if it is fraud or not, right? We have also talked about Fraud awareness part which is also like a very, very important area to make uh, all of our customers um, aware. And in the end also, we, uh, I think it's very important to mention that it's a collaboration between all of us, right? Um, we, the banks, need uh, to collaborate. We, the insurance uh, companies, need to collaborate. We, you know, together with the clients, we need to collaborate and also with our uh, employees itself, because also there it's very important that we train actually our employees on how can fraud happen and how to prevent it. And in the end, it's also a responsibility, I would say like from all of us also here in the room to you know, uh, unite and um, to uh, fight fraud going forward. Thank you very much. So thank you. good luck thank with you. the continuous innovation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.